Hello and welcome to Jolie Living. Today we're going to put together a little cutting board out of scraps. I have some odds and ends right here, a little bit of teak, some alder, a little bit of oak, just some scraps that were laying around. I have already cut them to length, but we're going to rip them all to the same uh, well, actually, we're going to call it height or thickness on the table saw. And then we're going to glue them together um, rather than a lot. Well, you see cutting boards these days in all different forms. Right now, we're going to make them kind of on edge grain. So they're all we're setting. We're going to be about an uh, inch and a half wide on the board. Almost all of them are about three quarters of an inch thick. We're going to cut them to about an inch and a half. And then we're going to glue them together like this. So that we'll have about a, an inch and a half thick cutting board. Then we might even cut a shape into the cutting board. We'll see how ambitious we are today. But uh, it'll be a little noisy here. But I'll... Uh, move the camera around and point it to the to the saw and we'll whip through these real quick and glue them up. All right, now that we have all of our boards ripped to the same width, I'm going to glue them up, clamp them, and let them set. And you only have to glue one side, but you do want good coverage. It's nice, my table has the Tyvek uh, tape on it, which is good for releasing after you have some glue seepage. I'm just using an old, an old foam brush here. I don't have a fancy glue brushes. This works pretty good because you want to coat the whole surface. Comment down below if you've done something like this. Next one I want to do is actually end grain. So you put this together, then you cut it this way and rotate them 90 degrees that way. Um, I think that would be fun. Just another step. Those ingrain boards are really pretty. And you can really play with the patterns. One of the things um, yeah, I mentioned before was all the different types of woods. So they give you different different colors different richness. Uh, and you can probably hear that sound in the background. Besides the wind howling, is my propane heater going. Makes it pretty tolerable here in the shop in the winter. For the longest time in December, I didn't really want to come down. It was just too, too chilly. But as long as it's in the 30s outside and you have the heater going, makes for a pretty decent day. This piece of teak was from a patio chair set that had been donated to us years ago by somebody who was done using it. It was pretty weathered. We didn't do much with it. Sat around and they kind of deteriorated, but they were part, just knowing that it's teak, it's kind of nice wood, I thought someday I'd find something to use it for. All right, real close now. And the fun thing, you can do whatever pattern you want. I put the piece of clear pine in the center, then the two 
pieces of teak and then two outer pieces of alder. I have a couple of bar clamps here. I'm going to use to clamp this all together. Those are pretty inexpensive. You just buy the clamping mechanism and then get you some steel pipe. It's usually, you know, like the uh, plumbing type pipe. And then these are easily adjusted to whatever size you need. Then keeping everything flat while you do this can take a bit of work. So imagine I have this much glue on top. If you have that on the bottom, that would stick to whatever surface you're on. But this Tyvek tape um, releases from things pretty well. So we'll let that glue up overnight. and Then we can plane it and cut it and do whatever we want. We've let the glue set up overnight. Now we're going to unclamp everything. Then get it ready for the planer. If you didn't have a planer, you could sand, but uh, there's quite a bit of sanding. Now we're going to use the thickness planer to uh, even everything up on this. See what we really have. few passes through the planer and uh, look at that surface. Very even. Just needs some sanding. Hopefully the oil will bring out differences in the uh, different colors in the wood. They're very similar but I was using scraps on hand so what do you expect? All right, I've sanded the board with some 120 grit and all surfaces and sides. And then I next did 220 grit. And it's uh, pretty, pretty smooth and fine right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it good. And uh, need to put some type of, uh, I guess you'd call it consumable finish. You know, you wouldn't want to use any type of polyurethane or the Danish oil. I use mineral oil. There are plenty of other options out there that are a uh, consumable, forget the right word, but, and some people even just soak, you know, fill a tub with this and then soak the board. It's gonna take up a lot. I don't have enough oil to do that and I'm just doing one board so I'm pouring it, pouring it on there I'll catch it before it spills over and wipe the rest of it and this is something you want to do throughout the life of the board keep it uh, from drying and cracking because this is something you wash and uh, the water every time you wet it and it dries it's kind of, a, of a, an expansion and a, and a contraction. So we'll get this covered and uh, 
have a board. And I think it is bringing out some of the colors a bit more than it was. So I'll just spend a bit of time coating the board and I'll be back. All right, well, I uh, let the oil soak and I rubbed it in and uh, kind of had a lot of excess I had to get off. It'd be nice to maybe do that another time um, in the next, you know, couple of weeks after some use to be sure we get good deep penetration of the oil. But overall, I'm pleased with how it turned out. I like, uh, you really notice it on the end grain, the variation in the colors. But uh, fairly easy, quick project. I hope maybe it inspires you to try something like this at home. Heck, you can make a board, make a cutting board out of just, you know, one board if you had the material. But uh, what something is, this was made just from scraps. So if you happen to have scraps laying around, it can be really anything. And uh, then you could even, I was thinking of cutting it into a shape, but, uh, and even a heart, but it was so rectangular. I didn't want to break it up into some skinny heart or a really small one. So this is where I'm leaving it. And I want to thank you for joining us at Jolie Living. It's been fun as always. And uh, let me know uh, any projects you've done like this in the comments down below. Give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. I think it's getting close to time to go snowmobiling. I can't wait. Hope all's well. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>